My son is now 10 months old and he's uh, starting to assert his personality. Uh, it's interesting to see this happen. Um, one of the really interesting things is uh, to watch a kid get naughty for the first time. Um, deliberately seek to, I don't know, do something that he knows you don't want him to do. In my case, it's simply um, in my bedroom, our bedroom, when he has a nap, I lay down next to him and the bed abuts against a window. So he gets up and hits the window. <clears throat> He's just a baby, but I don't want him to break the window. <laughs> so I sort of prevent him from doing that. And he starts, sometimes if he's in a particular state or for whatever reason, whatever mood he's in, I don't, I don't understand, but it looks for all the world as though he does it because I don't want him to do it. Now, what do you do about that when your own child is um, behaving that way? And no one has taught him to do this. It seems to be spontaneous. Um, especially when, you know, as all parents do, you think your kid's adorable and perfect and everything like that. But you see this. Um, I think a lot of parents would, might sort of go into denial about things like that. Um, or they might get moralistic about it and, That is bad! You must not do that! Um, which is kind of, in my opinion, something of a translation of you're bad. <laughs> because this will to do this seems to come spontaneous, spontaneously. It seems to be inherent in children. Um, boys, I guess. I don't know. Maybe girls. I don't have a girl. I, but you know, I'm watching him. And, you know, he's got this. He's got this naughtiness in him. Which as far as I know, is common to a lot of kids. <laughs> if not most kids, if not all kids, I don't know. What do we make of that? This desire to do things for the express purpose of screwing other people up or getting them irritated or something. You know, I did my bit on schadenfreude and how we seem to like as a species to impose ourselves upon others and test our will and our power against others. And we've developed all kinds of things like team sports and various competitions and idiot reality TV shows where we can fantasize about competing with other people in ways that are not as damaging, say, as out-and-out -out violence or out-and-out -out sabotage of somebody else's life. Um, it's a real interesting dynamic as somebody who wants to be something of a conscientious parent. What do you do when you're confronted th with this in a child? Um, how do you handle a kid's willfulness? I don't know if we'd call that as a will to power, but um, it's, uh, it's certainly a will to exert oneself over another. Um, as an end in itself, I guess. As I say, I, I don't know what's going on even in my own son's mind. He hasn't learned to speak yet, and I can only go by observation. But it does seem to me clear that this is what he's doing when he gets up to hit the window. He knows I don't want him to do it, and that's why he wants to do it. Now, a lot of parents, I presume, would get angry at that point. I don't get angry. It's strange. I might get impatient sometimes when I'm trying to do something else and he's hitting the window, and I'm not so much angry that he's or I don't, I'm not judging him for doing this, but I'm just sort of irritated that I'm being interrupted at what I'm doing. Um, Logic Rolls the Dice uh, once said that he thinks it's hilarious the way that I'm raising my kid like a laboratory experiment. That's not really, uh, you know, I'm not actually doing that, although this video probably sounds like it. But um, I'm actually uh, just fascinated by this. Fascinated by complete uh, reversal of the idea, I guess, of in, uh, of um, 
what's it called? Uh, original Sin, or um, The Dark Side, that has to be fought against. Um, but we don't really want him to learn to just do that whenever he wants. Um, it's an interesting thing, and, and, and it's gotten me thinking, and it's gotten me thinking along the, time, the lines of, say, um, utilitarianism versus the social contract where, you know, say, as I say, the American Republic is based upon utilitarianism and the French Republic is based upon the social contract, generally speaking. Um, and each one has its own merits and demerits. Now, raising a kid without attempting to get him to declare war upon that part of himself that is exerting himself against his own father, against uh, someone from whom he learns the very concept of authority, um, is an interesting proposition. And, you know, in a way you're gambling with fate of a human being um, in not sort of raising him conventionally and just saying, that's bad, don't do it. That's being a bad boy and that's enough. Um, I have a funny feeling that my kid is going to grow up to question everything I bloody do. I did that to my parents. Uh, I drove my parents nuts, constantly asking them for clarification of everything. Why, 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 why? Um, I wasn't even defiant about it. It was just, I will do as you say, but I want to know, I want to understand why. Now, if, if you can imagine raising a kid like that, who's like that right until, you know, he leaves the house at the age of 23 when I moved out. Um must be enough to drive you around the bend. How about um, something along the lines of there will be repercussions, that's why. I wonder if that will lead to a more open mind than because that's a bad thing to do. Um, would it lead to a more I guess, adaptable human being. Um, because the more that information in this world and human contact proliferates in the class of civilizations and everybody now has an opinion and it's all spewed out onto the internet and everything, there seems to be a lot more things in this world to make you annoyed. Um, and I think that anger is, or frustration, I guess, which leads to anger, is a real menace in the postmodern world, where the, the, the world is just so complex and contradictory that it's enough to drive you nuts and make you angry or misanthropic or whatever. What if you'd been raised from the get-go that there's no such thing as right and wrong? There's only action and reaction. Um, I wonder what kind of a human being that would be, where you're not you're not considered bad, or that aspect of you is not considered bad, um, that you seem to have an innate desire to frustrate other people, or to dominate them, or to compete with them, or uh, whatever. But there are consequences for you doing that inappropriately. I seriously think, and but this is just an idea right now, I seriously think that might be uh, a saner way to inculcate behavior in a child, inculcate um, what society considers acceptable behavior into a child. Um, as I always like to point out, I think that we overdo it on the guilt side, and we don't even realize that we do it, if you ask me. Um, but, and I'm probably going to end up wielding guilt against my son as well, just like you know most parents do, I, I presume. Um, but imagine what it would be like if you had a kid raised from the get-go um, simply along the lines of, if you do this, there are consequences as opposed to, if you do this, you're bad or you're wrong. Um, Nietzsche said that his philosophy was a philosophy for the modern age. And I think the will to power is something that um, we're 
increasingly modern enough, I think, as a civilization to wrap our heads around. Um, but let's say, and I think this is latent in all of Nietzsche's writing, and I think it may have something to do with his ideas on the herd versus the non-herd. I don't even know if the non-herd is the ubermensch, but um, the herd may require guilt. It may require simplistic answers, right and wrong, you know, that kind of thing. What about those of us who don't really identify with the herd anymore, even though we're quite comfortable swimming among it? Um, how do people like us cope with the madness of the modern world, and how would we create a philosophy or a pedagogy, I guess, um, that is devoid of that which the herd requires, um, that is more reality-based than is ought based I guess. Um, I'm sure that there are precedents for this, lots of them, if you ask me. Um, and Nietzsche deals with the ancient world, and I think he's right there. The, the concepts of right and wrong that they held were quite different from ours and had little to do with guilt at all, um, and a lot more to do with the social contract. Um, just a thought, but you know, it, it is something that, that you do think about when you're fascinated with human motivation. Okay, uh, Mr. Anakantavad, you don't like guilt? Okay. Let's see what happens if we just put it aside for good and we accept the uh, dark side as equally valid to the light side, colloquially expressed. What are you doing? Are you creating an ubermensch or are you creating a monster by raising him that way? <laughs> um... Just a thought. I'm I'm not really making an experiment out of my kid, by the way, but, uh, it, you know, it, it's a fascinating thing to see a personality develop from the beginning like that. And um, it's a fascinating thing with, you know, when you have a background of a, of a philosophy, I guess, uh, Catholicism as it is practiced in the Irish North American community, um and you've decided that that's not an ethical system fit to be perpetuated. Now what are you going to do? 